Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's a massive show, mate, for, and congratulations on Thank it. You. It's uh, been a huge, huge hit on Netflix, and obviously, look, it's David Beckham. We all love him. Back in the, you know the nineties, we was all obsessed with him. But this documentary, um, for people who haven't seen it, it is about the rise of the the talented East London schoolboy, best known footballer in the world. Includes interviews with his wife, his family, teammates, Gary Neville, Eric Cantona, Rio Ferdinand. Real Madrid players, it explores all aspects of Beckham's career. And, I mean, just to start it off, how did it come about? Well, for me, it came about because the director, Fisher Stevens, is, a, is an old friend of mine, and he and I had made a film many years ago, like 15 years ago, about the New York Cosmos called Once in a Lifetime, that, you know, the soccer team from New York in the 70s with Pele and all those guys. And Fisher rang me, whatever I guess it was three years ago now, to say, look... I've been offered the chance to direct a film about David Beckham. Who is he and should I do this? <laughs> and I was like, Fish, who is he? First of all, yes, you should do it. And most important of all, you've got to let me produce it. So Fisher initially rang me. I then rang the guys, the execs at Netflix to say, guys, it's got to be me who produces this. And then I rang Nicola Housen, who runs David's company, who was sort of, who was sort of driving the whole project and said, look, can I come in and see you? Because I passionately want to produce this film. And I... would I'd already produced a film with Sir Alex Ferguson, so... Okay. So, what, so, the, the documentary? Yeah, oh, yeah watch it. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 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 I produced yeah. that. So so I think, uh, you know, I had a head start and an advantage because, of course, as you now, having seen the, the, the series, you know how important Sir Alex is to David. Yeah. So that's how I got into the frame. I have to say, John, just look as you're my mate, it is... A brilliant dog. Honestly, I promise you, anyone that loves football, even if you don't love football, yeah. you know, you, you watch this because it gives you an insight. You don't have to love football because it tells you about his life. I actually forgot, and it's mm, how globally known he was. What a phenomena he was. Mm. And, it, it, you know, he, he was going out to place in, in the Middle East. It, uh, out in, in Japan, wherever. In every, you, yeah. He was probably at that time the, the, the world's most known sports star. Yeah, alongside Michael Jordan, he's the yeah. most famous sports star. But Michael Jordan, Pele, and David Beckham, and to this day, David is Beckham right? is absolutely as famous as anyone out there. Um, and certainly, you know, our, our our ambition when we set out to make the film was to make it a film that wasn't for football, not wasn't for football fans, but that would appeal to people who had no interest in football mm -hmm. and no interest in him, just because of, because there's so much to his story and to Victoria's story. Yeah that we felt like, you know, the ambition, as I said, was to really surprise people by telling a story that completely transcend the, transcends the football of it all. And the football of it all is also incredible. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously watching it, it's, um, for me, being a footballer, growing up, he was a bit of an idol of mine, you know, David Beckham, that Man United team, that era of, you know, the Skullses in midfield and everyone. And you know, so, so watching it was actually quite emotional. Because you you, you, got, you see the path that he's gone through, the, the, the steps that he's took. But actually, you also see the downfall of his career and, you know, the moments where he was going through some real tough times. And just talk me through some of the stories that you, you, you know, that you, you'd set up and now you, you, did you just put things in front of him and he just talked? Do you know what, what we did was we originally thought this was going to be sort of a, 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 a story about working class Britain and, and the story of all these young working class kids and how they made their way up through, through using, through football, using David as like, you know, their inspiration. And then, when we did our first interview with him, we suddenly realized there was so much more to David's story. Obviously, he has that working class background. But we we suddenly realized that what we wanted to do was sort of take him from the beginning. We literally chronologically went through his entire career and his entire life. And we shot, we shot over 40 hours of interviews with him. We shot 15, 16, 17 times with him. And we very slowly and progressively walked him through his entire life and his entire career. And I think, you know, we did that because we could tell that he was really up for the experience and that very quickly we could tell how emotional and impactful it, the whole it, the whole thing was for him and that he, he we were going to be able to get him to really articulate that. Yeah. And so we just sort of, as I said, we walked him through his whole career and it was incredibly emotional for him. And as you say, you know, there were some... There were some extraordinary moments, both highs and lows. And actually, the thing about the lows, what's so remarkable is how he, how resilient ultimately he was and how he always, mm. always, without fail, bounced back and triumphed. And mm. that is kind of extraordinary because not without permanent damage. You know, he is, he's scarred, deeply scarred, you as can you can see tell. That. Yeah, you can deeply see scarred. You can see he's scarred. Yeah, no, it, it was a really extraordinary process of, dis voyage of discovery for all of us, not least, you know, He'll never get over leaving Man U. And you guys as footballers will understand. He will never, 
get over leaving Man U. He never wanted to. And his heart was properly and is permanently broken by that. And I didn't understand that until we really got into it with him. And the scene in the film where he and Sir Alex break up effectively mm. is like heartbreaking. It's really, really, and and that you know that's one of the that's one of the many things that somehow well that he went through and somehow he's managed to bounce back from. But it's a permanent scar. The brilliance of the doc is that it gets you emotionally both highs and lows. You're absolutely right. I felt myself welling up because of what he was going through, and you could see the emo- you saw in his eyes at the low points when he was welling up. And there was the euphoric moments, of course, of Greece at Dead Old Trafford, where he spoke about that. It really does hit home. But what I found really interesting about it was you never interview two people at the same time. You let them have their own space, whether it be Ronaldo, Capello, Sir Alex, Beckham, or or, or Posh. But it was only until the end when they're together, and and that I thought was a a brilliant ending. What what was the thought process by only having one person in the room at any one time? Well, I tell you what we figured out really quickly was that Fisher, who is also, you know, he's an actor, he's, he's had an incredible career, he's a successful actor, he's a successful director of movies, he's directed Al Pacino and all sorts of others. He has this amazing ability to, to disarm and charm people. And so we really, so he was a really great, you know, because a lot of those interviews under normal circumstances would be pretty straight, pretty shut down and hard to sort of infiltrate in terms of an interview. But they all, they'd seen Succession, which Fisher was in, and they they sort of immediately were taken by him. And actually the fact that he doesn't and didn't have a great knowledge of David Beckham, didn't, I mean, he's a football fan. He's an American football fan. He started as a Chelsea fan when I took him there. He married an Arsenal fan and oh, is an Arsenal fan. Oh, then his mate bought Liverpool, now he's a Liverpool oh, fan. Oh dear, okay. So, well, then, okay. <laughs> that gives you an understanding what kind of football fan he is. But it was great that he didn't know it all because, you know, if I'd been directing it, not that I'm a director, I'd have come to it thinking, I know this story. We're going to go here, here, here and here. Yeah. Fisher didn't. So he literally, when he met these people, he didn't know one from the other. He had to go on this journey himself to discover wow. who they were and what their connection to to David was. And I think that was a really great way of, of first of all, making them all super relaxed and then getting the best out of them. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously Sir Alex Ferguson features in it quite a bit. And, you know, he is, for me, the greatest manager of all time. And the only person who can get near him is going to be Pep. He is actually... It tells a story about Sir Alex and how he managed in that, you know, he, he was pretty ruthless and cutthroat. Did he have an aura when you sat down with him and talked to him about like certain ways that he dealt with things and how he dealt with the players in that? Because I think that now, in the modern-day management, wouldn't work. But back then, he was he was pretty ruthless, wasn't he? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd agree with you. He's the greatest manager of all time. Second of all, like I said, I, I produced Never Give In, the film that his son Jason directed. And I have to say, when I first met him, I was scared as hell because I, you know, we all rem- we know yeah. Fergie is a Chelsea fan. I hated him. <laughs> you know, actually, he's incredibly approachable, incredibly likable, incredibly warm, and a really lovely, welcoming man. When it comes to management, he's brutal, and mm. that's his method, and it's incredibly effective. And that's definitely, you know, so he had this sort of mixed dynamic with David because he was all of those things with David, but he was also genuinely a father figure to David, a real father figure to David, which is partly why the breakup was so difficult for David. And is a recurring theme in the in the documentary series. David and his own father and that relationship, which was incredibly tough. David and Sir Alex, who ultimately Sir Alex cast him aside. Mm. David and Glenn Hoddle, or as Fisher calls him, Glenn Huddle, mm. um, who also threw him under the bus. You know, he's got this recurring theme of father figures in his life who, for want of a better phrase, kind of abandoned him. Um, and that is something that he carries with him. So, so, but, but yes, yeah, Sir Alex... You know, he's David has the utmost, utmost respect for him, and 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 equally, you know, there was an element of fear because that's how Sir Alex went about managing and incredibly successfully. The Sports Bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy, Monday to Thursday nights from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.